All right, looks like we're going to be doing a, another uh, Sansui power switch. I totally did not expect this one. It's not so bad when you expect something. It's just when you don't expect it and you have to do it. For some, for some reason, that makes a difference to me anyway. So, we'll get this one out. I can't imagine it could be any worse than the last power switch. Um, nothing I don't think could be uh, any worse than that. So, you know, it's just the way the old cookie crumbles. We'll see what this one's issue is. And kind of go from there. The good thing is, um, they come out pretty easy. So that's what we got. So interestingly, um, I remember this from the A5 power switch. Um, your speaker switch is actually utilized um, on the A7 here, uh, where it wasn't on the, A <clears throat> on the A5, I think they used a muting circuit or something, I don't know, I could be wrong about that, don't quote me, but, so, uh, the speaker switch is actually active, which is, I don't know, the way I look at that, that's kind of a bad thing, because that means there's, if there's problems with the speaker switch, we're going to have issues. So I just weaseled some solder wick underneath these legs here to get them lifted up, the ones that are bent over. Now the solder mask, once again, I ran into this before, is not very good on this board because you can see what happened by me getting the solder wick under them to try to lift them up. Um, I took the coating off the solder mask So, it should pop up without too much issue. That's really all there is to that. So, we just straighten those up a little bit. Kind of break them away, but they were actually already broke away. But sometimes you need to do that to, to break them away a little bit. So, that's about all there is to that. That came out pretty easily. So, uh, I just cut these wires off because sometimes they're wrapped. And uh, you can overheat them trying to pull the wires off of them since they're wrapped so tight. So, it's easier just to have it out of the unit and uh, get the wrap off of it without applying excessive heat down here so before we even go any further we're just going to assume worst case scenario the speaker switch is probably messed up as well and uh, that doesn't look too promising Extremely promising. So, I uh, might have to find a way to pop this apart too. I just want to see if it ever decides to work at all. Um, since this unit was stated as tested. And of course it's it's not even going to try to work. And um, that kind of rings uh, familiar because that's what the uh, the uh, A5 did to me. Trying, but that's about it. So I'm getting that feeling of deja vu here. So I guess the thing to do is start chipping 
this red stuff away. That takes a few minutes. So this is kind of a ditto of the last power switch. I just put the shear cutters on the edge or the side of the switch and then just pull the jaw down the length of it to chip that stuff off. So like I said, I just uh, do these last after the thought. That way I don't have to hit them with a lot of heat and fuss with them trying to rip a wire off of them and damage them. So Might have to do some solder sucker maintenance. So then all I do is just start shearing away at them <clears throat> until I get them all off. And I just take the pliers and straighten them up and give them a little bit of a twist back and forth. And um, then I'll have to file these edges and file. So then we just... Uh, file these off as smooth as we can get and uh, that's pretty much all there'll be to that I said this before on the other power switch video you can feel by the file whether or not you're taking solder or you're taking terminal by the hardness of it so if you feel the softness of the terminal go away um, of the solder more to the point then you know you got it filed down enough that the cover plate should pop off of it. So that should be good enough and you got to file them right down into the very crevice here to uh, get that plate to slide over top of them. So then I just get the strongest and the thinnest fingernail I got and work it under the cover here and just keep working it backwards on each side until I can get this cover to pop off and this one this one here is being stubborn this uh, fiberglass cover is very thin and it looks like it's glued down pretty good to this edge so I'll just try uh, running a knife blade down underneath there to get that one started off so this one here was just a little stubborn, there was glue or something underneath it. So that should pop that off. And this one here is extremely stubborn. Extremely stubborn. But there we are, I had to fight with it for <clears throat> about 30 minutes. There's not enough light here to see in there, but these contacts are extremely bad. Now what you won't, don't want to happen is have this lever contact come out. Now what I was about ready to say before everything went wrong, is I was just going to say, what you don't want is for those switch contacts to fall apart on you. And of course it happened. So this could be about a three hour ordeal if it's anything like the last one was. To get this stupid little roller back in that switch. And the only way I found to do it is to be able to assemble the switch upside down to keep the roller from falling out. <laughs> Unbelievable. So uh, look how bad that contact is. There's just absolutely no way that thing could have came on. And uh, that one in there isn't any better. So it's going to be a long day. Alright, so about three hours later I got the power switch all done. It was really bad. Um, sometimes what you have to do uh, when you get them really deep pits in a contact is uh, you got to unfortunately take an exacto knife and kind of scrape them out a little bit um, before you start trying to polish it off and uh, taking any uh,
plating off a switch contact is just never a good thing so I think the best way to look at redoing a switch is it's just buying you time uh, to find a switch and get one ordered um, if hopefully you can find one so that's the way you should really look at the switch process fixing one uh, there really is no such thing as fixing one and uh, making it new again it's just uh, buying you some time until you get one um, so with that in mind uh, the roller was the issue on this one uh, when I took it apart the whole thing just came undone the roller fell out and it was just an utter nightmare but now I figured out um, how to get the roller back in with trying to without trying to assemble the switch upside down <laughs> That was my first experience, so work out for the best. Alright, I got the power switch back on the board. I put a cap across the contacts. Uh, I didn't wire my mains connections into the terminals on top here. I just, I really just don't like twisting the wires around these. And then, because if you ever have to get it apart, you run the risk of running excessive heat on these things. And it's just not good. Um, by the same token, um, I've said this before in other videos, it's not good to run your AC mains connections on a connection that's not a mechanical plus a soldered connection. And I had to, to uh, defeat that rule here. So I just ran my mains down into the board and soldered them um, until maybe another day. That's really the best I can do. All right, moment of truth. Oh, I like how those meters did that. Kind of like a little self-check. They uh, went the whole way up and then uh, went down, kind of like they do on uh, like the D5 and D7. So, job done.